Well, welcome everybody. This is uh, John 10, verse 7 through the 13, and this is our last uh, reading together, uh, John, th for the entire year, as we all uh, pull up stumps for a time period over the uh, uh, Christmas period, and we're anticipating that this will actually be our last uh, daily video uh, for the foreseeable future. The aim of our series right back at the beginning from Psalm 1 for Psalm a day and then into John and reading it together was to offer a devotional uh, type of instruction for those who really will be struggling to meet up together during COVID-19. And uh, hopefully a number of you have been uh, blessed by it and I certainly have and I know Josh and uh, Evan have been as well. And a great thanks really from uh, the three of us to a great many of you from Bible study leaders to youth to children to families a whole host of people have got behind uh, these videos and have themselves participated and I myself have found that greatly encouraging as well and it's why this is a great passage to end with because it looks at the abundant life the joyous life which is spent in fellowship to Jesus Christ and in fellowship with one another as we await our final fellowship of eternal life in heaven and this is exactly what Jesus is speaking about from verse 7 onwards. He talks about himself being the gate. He says, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. In other words, the entry to heaven, the entry to eternal life, the entry to salvation is entirely through Jesus Christ. And whilst and yet we don't know what that meant in John 10, we finally will find out later in the gospel where the gate's entry is a cross. The cross of Christ is the gate, the entry of all belief. And what the cross symbolized was his death for my sin to pay for the access, the entry point, the point of belief that my judgment that stopped me entering, where the door will be closed and it says, keep out. It was actually open because Jesus became the gate, the entry point for all in to eternal life. Every other person who tries to tell you a way to heaven that does not have Jesus Christ cross as the gate and entry point is a thief and a robber. They are trying to steal salvation and it will not happen. You can read it here. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Great promise. They will come in and go out and find pasture. See, it's a good thing to enter into eternal life because that is where you find true peace, true pasture, which means true blessing. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full, everlasting, not just in eternity, but as soon as you enter salvation. Salvation is the entry point, not merely to eternal life, but to the life that is full. And the full life begins in knowing Jesus Christ. He then goes on to the second metaphor and verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd is the Lord Jesus, that shepherd from Psalm 23, that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not want for anything, because in this world I have everything I need, a knowledge of God, a knowledge of his love, an assurance of salvation, and the gift of eternal life. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. Sadly, Israel's leadership was acting like hired hands. The hired hand was supposed to see the shepherd come and announce his arrival and be joyous. But the hired hand, and sadly, deserted true Israel. And Jesus is casting judgment upon them. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The sad reality is that that leadership of Israel uh, fled from Romans, from all who came before and after. And sometimes even in churches, we have those who act like wolves. And there are those who do not call them to account. But the Lord Jesus, he resists all wolf attack, all spiritual attack. And the sheep listen to his voice and follow him. There is no spiritual attack that can be sustained against the church that is under Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean you won't be persecuted, potentially killed, but no wolf can steal your faith, can rob you of your place in the pasture. 
because the Lord Jesus is the entry point and the exit point, and the wolf can only come in and steal what, sadly, the person listens to. Because if you listen to the voice of the shepherd, he will guide you to eternal life and safety. It's a great message, isn't it, that the Lord Jesus speaks of in our passage here. And it's a great verse to end in. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. There's the entry point. The shepherd cares for the sheep so much that he would die for the sheep in order to become the gate, where the gate is a cross, and entry to eternal life is entirely predicated on your response to the shepherd's laying down his life for you. I hope that before this Christmas, you and others will continue to see in Jesus Christ the eternal Son of the Father, who as the Good Shepherd laid down his life for the sheep and became the gate, the entry point, the cross, that opened the gate of glory to all who would come in. Amen.